Hey guys, you know how we've been watching Storytime Animators lately? Yeah? Well, I think it's about time we watch two of my most favorite Storytime Animators! The Odd yeah. Ones Out and Jaden Animations! Not you, you don't oh. have a channel! You don't know that! Alright, what do we got up first? This one is called Growing Up Without Cable! Uh, and it's about uh. how he grew up watching PBS Kids! Yeah. Imagine if Netflix, YouTube, and Hulu never existed. Okay. What would uh, you be watching that's just right a now? Would you okay. be watching this? The wrong guy. I don't think so. Oh. You'd be watching <laughs> this box right here. A television? No, On television this device, set. instead Something of like picking that. what you wanted to watch and when you wanted to watch it, the television would decide all that for you. And instead of watching a single five second skippable ad in the beginning, you'd have to watch five 30 second long unskippable ads. That's, Can you uh, think oh, of anything like more minutes. annoying? An advertisement right in the middle of your show? I don't know if my parents are being cheap for trying to discourage an unhealthy habit of watching too much TV, but growing up, my parents didn't have cable television at all in the house. Now, in this modern day and age of online content, some of you are living perfectly content lives without cable. I know I am. But you have to understand, in the early 2000s, online video wasn't a thing. Yeah, YouTube was created in 2005, but what did that mean? This guy at a zoo? That's lame. So being an early 2000s kid, you had to get your cartoons through the TV. And if your parents yep. didn't pay $65 a month to get cable, then you didn't get the channels with SpongeBob, Jimmy Neutron, or Courage the Cowardly uh, Dog. I don't the know only thing you are. got was this green brother hey. and sister called PBS Kids <laughs> and whatever these things were. PBS Kids stands for Public Broadcasting Service. Kids. That meant all the shows on PBS Kids were government or privately funded. So the shows on PBS didn't really have any commercials per se, but they did have the same sponsorship ads that would play a message before every oh, show. Yeah, like if you grew up on blue. PBS Kids, then Juicy Juice oh, juicy and juice. Where a Kid Can I Be a Kid know. is just engraved in your memory. Yep. And also, every show the would original, thank you, the, the viewer, the for watching, and I yeah, think that's really nice. That's so, everyone watching this, you're welcome. I'm kind of glad my parents <laughs> didn't buy like cable. You. Because instead of spending hours of my time watching mindless television, I spent hours of my time watching okay. television with morals. Oh, and yeah. 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 A lot of shows on PBS yeah, were either me. educational or taught you how to be a good person. The shows I'm going to yeah. mention had pretty crazy concepts, but the conflicts in each episode were very down-to-earth and slice of life -y, almost like the shows were made for children. Like in Clifford the I Big will. Red Dog. Oh, Clifford! It's a show Clifford! about this girl's dog who grew up to be the size of a freaking house oh, for no yeah. reason, except for the fact that the girl loved the dog so much that, that, that he grew him. up yeah. to be a monster. So oh, that means dang. if your <laughs> dog is normal-sized... You don't love it enough. Uh, and it oh, probably wow. doesn't love you. So, oh, that, yeah. That was deep, and now that's made me think about things. Great. <laughs> yeah. Giant Red Dog is a pretty weird premise, but the episodes were about everyday things. Hey, like this Chloe. blue dog feels bad that he tore up his owner's sweater, and his friends tell him to just be honest, and he does, and everyone's happy. Or the episode yeah. where this new dog hey, moves into town, honestly. but he's oh. missing a leg, and then Clifford and his oh, friends have to episode. learn that having that three legs still means so you can accomplish a lot of things any normal human can do. Oh. I mean, dog. And I rate this show yeah. a 10 yeah. out of 10. Next is yeah. Dragon Tales, Dragon! a show that made dragons kid friends. Yeah. The biggest, not so brave of heart. Yeah. There's Cassie, yeah. she's so shy, but so very smart. There's Zack and Wheezy, and they're terrible yeah. fun. Cause oh you know she has our best friend. Dragon Tales, Dragon Tales, it's almost time to Dragon Tales. Clifford, the characters would spend an episode learning everyday things like how to do a cartwheel, or they would try to make it rain so they could show their friend uh, what a rainbow looks like. Memory. And there was also oh. this grandpa dragon oh, in Spanish dragon. for some reason. Don't come too close, Nino. Oh, and that wasn't the weirdest thing on the show, actually. There was also a dragon character in a wheelchair, which, just like uh, Clifford, is a whoa. good character because it teaches kids that disabled people are still people who can accomplish a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's a weird combination of yeah. two things. A I dragon, a mythical beast known that for destroying cities, <laughs> In a wheelchair? If you wanted to stop yeah, a dragon I mean, from destroying your city, then you just don't install wheelchair ramps anywhere. <laughs> I should stop oh, talking. I rate the show a terrible. 10 out of 10. 
Now <laughs> let's talk about Arthur. Here's some fun Yay! trivia. Arthur is supposed to be an aardvark. You don't walk. Personally, I don't see it. Basically, it was nope. a show about Arthur and his other furry friends learning lessons, but Arthur tended to tackle more serious subjects than the other two shows. Like, they no, have so. episodes Never. where D.W. hears her parents get in a fight and she worries about them getting a divorce, or the episode where Arthur oh. Falcon punches his little oh. sister and oh, even having to deal with someone moment. you know getting I cancer. <laughs> what? Not cancer? The character gets treatment and lives, by the way. Yeah. Because yeah. it's a kid's show. Of course. 10 out of 10. Jeez. Next, let's talk about my favorite show on PBS. Cyber Kids. Chase? Cyber Chase. Oh, yeah, you yeah, call it! We're moving. The show didn't teach kids more or how to properly treat the disabled. It taught them something far more important. This made me actually like math. Cyber Chase is set inside a virtual computer world, and this one character named Motherboard was supposed to be the queen slash protector of this world, but she sucks at her job because the villain of the show, Christopher Lloyd, infects her with a virus. (laughs) So now these three kids have to go on adventures using math principles to thwart the bad guy's plans to save Mommy Board. Motherboard. Motherboard. Mommy. Mom, come back. Mommy, no. We need to save Mommy Board. (laughs) And unlike all the other shows, this show had an overarching story. The kids would always get this close to saving Motherboard, but nothing they did worked. When I was a kid, I always wondered how much longer it would be until they finally saved her. (laughs) For real. And they never did. Yeah, no, the show's been going on what? for 16 years, oh and they're still God. learning new math principles, still? trying to save Motherboard. Well, I think they're change. at calculus at this point. The show is teaching you slower than an actual school. What kind of a show makes you wait 16 years <laughs> for a conclusion? <laughs> Cyber Chase does, and it's one of the best shows ever created. 10 out of 10. One last show I want to bring up is called Caillou. All you need to know about Caillou is that I hate him. Caillou is a four-year-old and a demon. (laughs) He constantly (laughs) throws a tantrum whenever he doesn't get his way. Even in his theme song, he mentions how much of a brat he is. Growing up is not so tough, except when I've had enough. And then he's crying like a child. (laughs) Well, you're going to have to grow up, Caillou. The world doesn't revolve around you. Now you might be thinking, James, this kid is four years old. Of course he's going to be a brat. And I agree, but a big problem with Caillou isn't the fact that he's a brat, but it's with his spineless parents. <laughs> hey, you mom, just let him get away with everything. Like, Whenever oh, I so misbehaved, cute. you know what happened to me? Spank I had to go sit in the timeout corner. You know what happens to Ooh. Caillou? Nothing. Not once does Caillou ever get punished. <laughs> it's always his mom just being like, Caillou, what you said wasn't very nice. Now go behave, okay? Zero out of ten with the show with just <laughs> the humans. I hate it. I just realized that all the shows I mentioned were animated, but there was a lot of non-animated shows that I still watch. But whatever, I could just say that these shows fit between my channel. Or it could make a part two. I can do whatever I want. Now, as a diehard PBS fanboy, I think I speak for everyone when I say that what PBS was missing was a crossover episode. How hard would it have been for the Clifford people and the Dragon Tales people to coordinate an episode where the three-legged dog finds the dragon scale, he could dig it up out of the sand because dogs (laughs) like to dig, except this dog wouldn't be that good at digging. But then he would meet up with a wheelchair dragon and they could be best friends. I would have loved that. As much as I'm joking about it, as a kid, I actually really wanted a crossover episode between the shows Clifford and Clifford's Puppy Days, Wait, which okay. is another how, show that follows Clifford was, before he was interesting, yeah, when he was tiny, work? so before Emily Elizabeth loved him. So there was a bunch oh. of new characters that all <laughs> knew Clifford when he was little, and the two shows existed in the same universe, so it wouldn't have been that unbelievable for Clifford oh, to visit his childhood home, yeah, okay. and then all the I other characters who used to call him uh, small yeah, 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 or yeah. squirt would see him now and be like, <laughs> Wow! Now let's go bully the people that bullied us. What the f- happened to you? Whoa. You see, it's funny because it's a kid show and you wouldn't expect them to say that. I right. waited patiently for that I, crossover I was not episode. That for real. But it never came. Man. Well. But at least I have fan fiction. George, oh. he wagged his oh. tail and smiled. Clifford, it's so good to see you. He nuzzled him as Whoa. a greeting. Whoa. Nice to hey, see you really too. It's been over George seven years since I last saw you. Yeah, it had. Clifford right. said happily. George turned oh. his back to the hill. I Here I come. I There's no quotation marks, by the way. He got ready to tackle him. <laughs> he punched George <laughs> off, oh and they God. rolled down. Then when they got to the bottom, George pinned Clifford, who was panting. Whoa. The three looked at oh, the two of them, uh, who seemed uh, to be having uh, a staring contest. 
Oh, so they decided that. to go they Timo, somewhere no. else. Both they laughed somewhere and else. got off of him. He sat down and waited for George to stand up. <laughs> so, what are we going to do? The red dog said while quickly getting into a playing position. Oh, okay, oh, that's enough. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we stop? Yeah. Yeah. Did any of you watch these shows as a kid? God. Did they really never save Mother whatever? No, they've never saved Motherboard. She's wow. never got I saved. Thought, that's so weird. I could have sworn they saved her. Nope, never. No, they always get that close. It's still going. So aside from nostalgia, I think it's time we did something more relatable. Like getting when you get a wrong number. Like, oh yeah, right. Like uh, I say five and Sora says six. Yeah, I'd say like four and a half. No, no, yeah. no, not like that. Like when someone calls you and they, they dial the wrong number, like this. Oh, uh, okay. It's for you, James. What? Oh. Hey, what? James. This is James from the future. I just wanted to oh. give you a call and let you know that puberty can be tough, but oh. you can get through it. I don't think... So I just yeah. wanted to let you know that everything's going to be okay, that. and I love you. Aw. Whoa. You got the wrong number. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I grew up in a generation where smartphones were a new thing, and everyone in my class had one, except for me. My parents oh, never got me same. one because they didn't want me to access the internet on a device that could fit in my pocket, because they were super strict and didn't want me looking at... Internet no! stuff? Oh, yeah. Which backfired horribly. <laughs> so they never gave me a smartphone. In fact, I didn't even get my first cell phone until I was 16 years old. Now, I as an adult who relatable. uses a cell phone every day, I don't know how I survived for 16 years without one. I think when I was younger, if I was ever in a situation where I needed to call my parents, I would just ask the nearest person if I could borrow their phone. Hey, you now, if there's any parents watching this who aren't giving their children a cell phone yet, take it from a guy on the internet with no children. You should get them one. It doesn't have to be a smart uh, one, you can uh. just give them your standard drug dealer phone. But you should at least oh. give them a cell phone in case there's an emergency and they need to call you or the police. The only downside <laughs> I can think of giving your child a phone so is they'll end up spending so too much time on it. Just so, you should just turn off oh, their service no, from time it, to time, it, it, I don't know. When I turned 16 and finished up my sophomore year of high school, I got my very first cell phone. Hey. An LG Yay. Cosmos 2. I, oh, I didn't oh grow up God, in the 90s. That, that, <laughs> everyone else had yeah. iPhones, yeah, but I was the only one with a, flip, with a phone that had a keyboard on it. Oh. And with that cell phone, I've had a couple of incidences where sometimes a random person would call me thinking I was someone else and then wouldn't admit they're wrong. And that's how you segue Stand into the theme likely. of this month's video. This first story happened when I was working at Suabway. That's right, another oh, Suabway, Suabway story. Hashtag Suabway, Suabway 4. It wasn't good enough to be in the other three. So, it was five <laughs> minutes until closing, and we get a phone call on the Suabway phone. I pick uh, it up and say, uh, Thank you for calling Suabway. How may I help you? I was supposed to say, This is James. How may I help you? But I wasn't about to tell this random stranger my name. <laughs> Idiot. Anyway, the other person on the line <laughs> said, Hey, what time do you guys close? <laughs> In five right minutes. Now. Is it all right yeah. if I show up late? I just need gas. And being the no, good what? employee what? that I was, I was totally willing to make this guy's sandwich over the phone, let oh, him pick it up what? after we closed, oh. and then I wouldn't ring him up and just pocket the money. I'm just oh. kidding. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. Oh. That's a crime. Please don't sue me. So uh. I said, Yeah, I can do that. What kind <laughs> yeah. of sandwich do you want? And he said, I just need gas. Oh, don't worry, sir. This sandwich will give you plenty of gas. No. Uh, I, I mean, no, I think he's just do you want chips or something? Station. No, he said. I just need gas. I was a little confused. Okay, yes. So you'll get gas. Then are you going to stop station. by and pick no, up a sandwich? And he said, station. I don't want a sandwich. And then it hit me. Even though the first thing I ever said to this guy was, thank you for calling Suabway, I think he thought he was talking to a gas station. So I said, Who calls a gas station? Sir, Who this calls is a, a subway? subway? <laughs> oh. The day. And I never got the chance to tell him that gas pumps don't close. This next yeah, story yeah. happened when I was at home and I got a call car. from a number I didn't recognize. Now, I've had friends tell me that they don't answer the phone to any number they don't recognize. But no, my anxiety yeah. won't let me do that. What if it's up? your yeah. bank calling saying your account got hacked? Yeah. What if it's your grandma? Because why would you have her saved in your phone? Why does or she what have if a it's gun? your Nigerian oh. uncle who wants to give you his collection of gold bars no, and needs your information no. for a wire transfer? No, you just no. never know. So I always pick up the phone. So I answered it, oh, and it was God, this sorry. woman asking for a Lawrence. And I said, oh, I'm not. Th that's You have the wrong number. 
And she goes, isn't this 416295? That's obviously not a real number, so don't try calling it. And I said, <laughs> no, this is 416293, because no! that's my phone number. Again, that's not actually a valid phone number, so please don't call it. And she goes, three? I don't think I pressed three. Well, you had to. And I don't know what to did. say to this woman, I just because up. my number is 416293. It's really not. But she doesn't think she pushed three. So I don't know how she's talking to me right now. <laughs> like this is Unless a conundrum of like, she how is this happening? Did so I <laughs> said, well, obviously, you did. You did. And then I made uh, a comic book no. <laughs> situation because I thought the internet would think it was funny. This next story <laughs> happened not too long ago. I got a call from a number I didn't recognize at 9:30 in the morning, and I was lying in my bed, asleep. And most people would agree that you're supposed to be awake and productive at 9.30. I, and I didn't want whoever this stranger was thinking I'm lazy, so I had to answer the phone with my best, I've been awake for several hours voice. Oh, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <gasps> Hello? guy! <laughs> 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 You're going to have to come quickly. Timmy fell down to well, Vance. Uh, uh huh. what? I said you're going to have to come quickly because Timmy fell down to well, Vance. I could tell it was a woman on the phone, but it was either her <laughs> accent or the phone being buggy <laughs> or I just had woken up, but I could not understand anything she was saying. But I could make out one word, which was Vance. So, <laughs> I did not have a lot to go off of. I said, I... <laughs> I think you have the wrong number. Oh, okay. Oh. Goodbye. Well, I should probably get the day started, I thought Somebody as I went back to sleep. Timmy but then immediately I got a Whoa. call from the same yeah. number. Hey, and I thought, okay, maybe if this person is calling again, even after I explicitly told her she had the wrong number, maybe it's not a wrong number after all. Maybe there's something else going on. Maybe it's an emergency, so maybe, mmm, talk to me. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, fans. Okay, I can't understand anything you're saying. So then this woman must have handed the phone to her friend because a different voice started talking, and I could actually understand her, and I'll never forget what she said, which was, Vance, no one thinks that you're funny. And even though I'm oh, not Vance, okay. that kind of hurt. Oh, so I stated the you, obvious, which was, Vance. yes, I am. And also, I'm not Vance. Yes, I, and she said, no, Lance. So I'm this whole time, Lance. these two have been looking for a Lance. So I told this woman, I'm not Lance either. And she said, well, this is the number they gave me. Okay, if okay. she had said it like, oh, I'm sorry, this is the number they gave me. I didn't mean to call you, stranger. Also, I do think you're funny and enjoy your videos. Then that would have been totally <laughs> fine. She's just shifting yeah. the blame to someone else. But instead, <laughs> she sounded so condescending, like I was like wasting was, her time. Like he was well, this is the number they number. gave me, and they can't be wrong, so you must be the real Lance. So I said, well, they must have given it to you wrong. Look, I'm too tired to be polite. But then she hung up on me. Okay, like this good. woman just basically yeah, yeah, yeah. called a random person, said, what? you're not funny, wow. and then hung up. So I decided to call her back and said, yeah. hey, I just Revenge. found the real Lance. He's the funniest guy I ever met. And he told me that to get his phone <laughs> number out to real pieces of shit. I'm just kidding oh. on the last part. I thought about doing it, but then I went back to sleep. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's probably a better And then idea. someone on the internet found my phone <laughs> number <laughs> and I changed it. And whoever has my old number is probably getting a lot of calls from strangers and people I went to high school with. Yeah. Sorry well, about that. Well. Hey guys, I'm back. I have <laughs> <laughs> That went places. That did go places. That was crazy. Yeah. All right. What I like to do with wrong numbers is I like to pretend that I'm the person that they're calling. <laughs> like, That's <laughs> awful. Yeah. What if, you're gonna get that other person in trouble. What if they're looking what for some, com someone completely different than your personality? Well, then they'll figure it out real quick. I but sometimes so. they don't ever figure it out. Oh wow. So I love the odd ones out, but another content creator I love is Jaden Animations, and they're they're friends.
friends, so they have the same kind of humor. I'm friends with them too. Yeah, I'm friends with them. So this one's Jaden's video called Things I Feel Guilty About. You know how in my last video I said I was an obedient child who never stepped out of line or broke rules growing up? I wasn't lying, but I do have things I've secretly carried on my shoulders for a long time and still feel arguably guilty about to this day. This video isn't just for your entertainment. It's gonna serve as me clearing my conscience and finally being free from these chains of guilt. Also, don't get your hopes up. None of these stories involve murder. Sorry, I didn't ah, kill anyone. Off, Every once in a while growing up, my dad would let us sit in front of the television while we ate dinner. That would be a special treat for my brother and me because mom wasn't home from work yet and she wouldn't let us watch TV during the week. Jeez. This is when we were really young. <laughs> like, Don't worry, I'm allowed to eat in front of the TV at least three days a week now. We were eating in front of the TV one night and I wanted to have chips for dessert. Our dinner rules were always eat yeah. dinner and then oh, get a little the? treat or dessert afterwards. And I wanted hole. chips, everyone's oh, favorite yum, dessert. Yum, yum. So my dad got the bag of chips chips and normally my parents poured us bowls but there wasn't much left so he just gave me the whole bag and said yeah. don't eat them all he oh, got what? two cool parent points that day it was going good so far eating chips in front of the tv this all. is the height of luxury i looked down yeah. and i ate all the chips no oh no Dang it. What do I do? My dad gave me one rule. My parents are never gonna trust me ever again. They're gonna disown me. My life is over. I'm gonna be living in a box on it's the side of the chips. road and I'll it's have to search chips. trash okay. cans for chips. I might as well pack my things and get a head start right now. I started to panic and my little kid brain started racing to think of some sort of way to avoid punishment. A rat! A giant what? rat burst through the door. Oh my god! Slapped the Sora, bag out of my big, hand, ate all the chips, you. and escaped out the no! window. And also oh, stole no! an extra cookie on its way out. Yeah, that would work. That would no, work. they wouldn't believe that. <laughs> I don't think rats eat chips. Jax finished eating early and went into the backyard to play. So what I ended up doing was going, Jax, do you want some chips? And I gave him the empty bag. Then I went over to my dad and said, Dad, I have something to tell you. I'm sorry. Jax ate all the chips. And I went into the and I I think my brother got into any trouble because I didn't hear anything else about it and my dad probably just threw the bag away. But since I never got caught or came clean, I've held this guilt about that whole situation ever since. There's layers to it. Not only did I lie to my dad and falsely accuse my brother, but on top of it all, I gave Jax an empty bag of chips. A perfect little regret cherry on the ice cream sundae of shame. And I really think that when my dad and brother watch this video, they'll be like, I don't remember this at all. Because I want to say it was like 13 years ago, which makes me feeling guilty even more pointless and stupid because it doesn't even matter and no one cares and I'm the only one suffering from it. This is a pretty effective way to learn works. a lesson. I've never finished a bag of chips since that day. One time I was at recess in second grade playing by myself in the grass. You know, like a freaking loser. This group of girls came up no. to me and said, Hey, Maybe we're playing tag and chasing the boys. You should help us. And I was like, well, beats sitting here and getting eaten by ants. So I started running around and chasing the boys with the rest of the kids. It was all normal tag at first, but somehow it started escalating to extreme tag. Extreme, extreme as in people started throwing rocks. Oh my Being a self-conscious child who had no that's understanding of tag, personal choices, I was like, oh, well, I guess we're doing this now. So I threw a rock and hit this kid in the back of the head, oh, which may I oh, add, took wow. some top-notch skill and coordination considering we were both running and he was a good distance away from me. Not to brag <laughs> or anything. Boom. Ow, <laughs> I'm telling. Oh, no, for a tell. I watched this kid start running off to tell a teacher and I knew I had to think Throw of something rock. fast. And don't tell me I should have just stood there and faced the consequences no, of my actions. Rock. You know, as a kid, you wouldn't have done that. This only works if we're all <laughs> honest with ourselves here. The first thing I could think of was to go hide in the bathroom because everyone knows teachers can't burst into kids using bathroom <laughs> stalls. That is definitely illegal in here. <laughs> I camped out in the girls' bathroom until I heard the recess whistle and went back to class. Obviously, the teacher was told what happened. I couldn't have run away from that, so I still got in trouble. But the guilt trip doesn't end the there. The teacher away. told me I wasn't allowed to go to recess tomorrow, which is reasonable. I can own up to that punishment. But she also said I needed to write a letter to my parents telling them what I did. I don't know what... what? I can relate to this because I actually have a similar story. So the people that I was hanging out with actually started thro making themselves throw up for no reason. I don't know why. Oh, Ew. My God. I distanced What's wrong with you? I distanced myself away from them, but I was the only one who got called into the principal's office and I actually got in trouble for it. Like, why didn't you stop them from doing that? Like, I wasn't doing it. It's not my problem. <laughs> 
Oh my gosh, that happened to me once. One time, this entire group of people were talking in the classroom, and I was just sitting next to them because that was my seat, and the teacher gave me detention! (laughs) (laughs) I I didn't even talk to them! (laughs) I don't know what pushed me to do this because I always did what grown-ups said, but something in my head told me, you're not writing that letter. Yeah. And so I didn't. Later that day, the the teacher came up to me and asked, did you write the letter? Yes. Please don't ask to see it. Please don't ask to see it. Mm, good. And so my parents never found out. <gasps> until right now. All right. Oh. In this video. Uh-oh. Please oh. don't ground me, Mom and Dad. I don't know the statute of now. limitations oh. <laughs> on throwing rocks at little boys, but it's been eight years. I think I'm safe. I'm not yeah. really guilty about this <laughs> next story, but it's resonated within me for a very long time, so I'm gonna add it to this video. One late night, I was on the couch playing my Game Boy, and it was very much past my bedtime. I don't remember exactly oh, what happened, but Pokemon I was Red? probably pushing it with wanting to stay oh, up a bit longer, man. and my mom was in my room telling me I needed to go to bed. It got to the point where she pulled the, I'm gonna count to three, and you better have the living room cleaned up and be in bed or else. Everyone Uh knows counting to three means serious business, so I sprung up and immediately started getting my crap together. The thing was, the ottoman was pushed out, and normally it's supposed to be against the couch, so I had to push it back. But being a scrawny five-year-old the size of a poodle meant it was probably equivalent to trying to push a semi-truck. I kept pushing and pushing with all my strength as I heard my mom in the background going, one, Two? I'm trying! Eventually, I just crumbled to the ground in defeat and started crying, and my mom found me on the floor <laughs> curled up next to the ottoman. I felt guilty I couldn't move the ottoman. But hey, you don't need to feel bad for me. Look at me now. Yeah! 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 Push that. Yeah, it's pretty inspiring. <laughs> so, yeah, those are the... <laughs> This one is absolutely one of my very favorite videos because she talks about how much she was obsessed with animals. Oh. And I've birds, always been an animal lover. Birds. Ever since I oh. saw a picture of a dog, I've been like, I want that. I still love and respect <laughs> animals, but as a kid, it was pretty intense. Not gonna lie. She just Can, we get a dog? Dogs? Can we get a yes. dog? Can we get a dog? Can we get a dog? My parents had to sit through. <laughs> hey, Sora, can we get a dog? No. Come on, can we get a dog? No. He already gave you a just dog said to you were a boyfriend. cat person. Yeah, I know, but I, I want to bug him. <laughs> Years of that until my dad finally couldn't handle it anymore and got me one for my seventh birthday against Ow. my mom's will. Before that, they tried everything to make me stop besides getting me a dog. And by everything, I mean a bunch of fish. Maybe if we shape no. these fish into a dog, she won't notice. <laughs> They'd come home with two fish from the pet store that would last for about fish a week, dog. die, and then get replaced. That's what a pup Repeat is, until yeah. dog appears. How many fish must die before I get what I want? Since we got fish from the pet store and not an actual breeder, that was probably a big contributing factor on why they died so quickly. uh, But as a five-year-old, I also just forgot to feed them a lot, so there's gotta be some fish blood on my hands for that. We went through probably 20 fish in the span of a couple months, but eventually we got these two goldfish that didn't die. A true miracle. They were pretty resilient little dudes. One was Goldie, and the other was probably named Fishy. Probably some of the most creatively flawless names I've ever known. But after a while, Goldie turned white, so I renamed it Rainbow because I thought it was cool he could change colors. I learned 13 years later from my marine biology teacher that Goldie slash Rainbow was probably diseased, which makes the color change less exciting. We eventually gave them away to my mom's friend, and they died. But that's all besides the point. My parents got me an army of fish and a dog I named Scruffy, but that was it. I wasn't able to crack them any further than that. And believe me, I tried. My parents had to become stone-faced, emotionless soldiers to keep my non-stop beseeching for more creatures at bay. After they got me a dog, I was pretty satisfied for about a year and a half until I decided I wanted a mouse. Something about their cute little faces and how they crawl with their cute little feet and their freaking ears made me obsess over having one, and my parents got to hear all about it. I asked my parents for a mouse for years, promising how I'd take care of it and blah 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 the whole thing. My mom pretty much hates rodents because she thinks their tails are weird, so there was no budging on that one. She tried to get me to stop by saying, all right, you can get a mouse, These parrots just but buckle. we'd have to get rid of Scruffy, <gasps> which is obviously oh. a bad bang for your buck. Um. No, what? No, no way. No, I'd never get rid of Scruffy. He's my pal for life. But not gonna lie, after hearing that response over 10 times, 
I started kind of considering oh, it. Oh, no! I was never actually going to do it. I was just oh. getting You're desperate, all right? God, when I was 10, I wrote on my right Christmas there. wish list that I wanted a mouse because I thought for some reason I'd foiled their plans and found a loophole. Yeah, went around ah, to sin. You can't override the power of the holy Christmas spirit. Christmas morning rolled yeah. around and I ran into the living room where all the presents were to not only find no mouse, but a computer mouse. Ah! Nice salt in the wound, mom. I got my hopes Mom's up clever. way too high. My disappointment was immeasurable, and my Christmas was ruined. I did get a computer, though, so that was cool. Oh, After my parents endured five mouse. years of me asking for a mouse, I read this book series called Maximum Ride, which was about these teenagers who had bird wings and oh, were on the run to not get so captured by the scientists who wanted uh. to keep experimenting on them. It was my favorite book series as a kid, and it made me really like birds, oh, no. which resulted in the next animal obsession. Oh, no. I swear to God, if I hear one more mention of a mouse again, I'm gonna- Mom, can we get a yellow named Amazon parrot? Yes, I started loving oh, birds back God. when I was- Sixth grade. Everyone say a big thanks to James Patterson for creating this bird obsessed monster. At the time, I wanted one of the big boy birds, a yellow naped Amazon parrot to be exact. I would spend hours just watching all the YouTube videos I could find of them and sending them to my parents, like, look, look how great they are. You totally want one now, don't you, after watching no. one play in a box and sing Old MacDonald? This was a oh whole God. new type of fixation. I mapped out on the ground where the cage could go with tape, Googled where Amazon parrot parrot breeders were near me. I made multiple oh PowerPoint God. presentations for my parents on why they should let me get a parrot. Okay, it was intense, stuff. and the pressure was on. My mom was even like, she earned you. so how about that mouse? But ah! no, mom, that ship has sailed. No, now I want a 15-inch parrot that lives for 80 bird. years. They started telling me, <laughs> you can get a bird when you move out. For and from real. then on, it was my goal to get out of my parents' house as soon as I could. I Obviously, I never got house. a yellow named Amazon parrot, but I never really the got out of my bird phase because I've got this that comes right here. Oh, I was pretty self-aware okay. that asking for a parrot was a long a shot, so even bird? though I still That's wanted a bird, I dialed yeah. back my animal requests, <laughs> and when I was 14, I started really liking flying squirrels. They were uh, my favorite animal for a squirrels. while, and that's when I realized Sugar people gliders. can have them as pets. Sugar gliders. Oh, Mom, can we Sugar glider, add that one to the list. I don't okay. think I actually bothered on, my parents on, too I'm much about page. getting flying squirrels as much as the mouse and parrot, but I know they the knew distance. I wanted one. And I knew they knew I knew they were gonna say no. So I guess I just kept that one a bit more internal. During the summer, we would visit my family in Canada, and my cousin Peyton was oh, really obsessed with ferrets at the time. So we would spend literally entire days on the computers together, researching ferrets and flying squirrels, and Amazon parrots because they were still my number one obsession, <laughs> lest not forget. We wrote down yeah, general facts we learned in Word documents, planned out how to care for them, added up how much money they cost, including cages, food, bedding, etc, etc. Oh we were the God. same amount of obsessed. It was a lot of fun, actually. We bonded a lot Aww. during those times, and she's still one of my best friends. Aww. She also never got a ferret, so Aww. sad times there. Aww. Peyton also got a rat named Lola, and that made me really want a rat. Which, of course, meant... Mom! Lola was so sweet and smart, and I always wanted to play with her. But that's also true with almost anyone's pets. If I come over to your house and you have any type of pet, I will be personally it's offended if you don't let me play it's with it for at least three hours. So I did we have a small no. point where I was asking if my parents would let rat me have a rat, and my mom was like, nope, and I'd be all, but what about the time you were gonna let me get a mouse because I was asking for a parrot? And she would say, nope, that ship has sailed. Yeah, got, got the Uno reverse card During 10th grade, I was also starting to really like, like raccoons. I thought they were sneak. Touche, mother. Touché. During 10th grade, I was also starting to really like raccoons. I thought they were sneaky oh and cool, God. and I googled if people had Back them as pets as a random, not Can serious thought. Me? But yes. surprise, surprise, some people do have raccoon pets. Oh. <gasps> Just kidding, bandits. they rip up couches and dig holes in walls, oh. and I'm not that devoted to raccoons. But I still dreamed about having a raccoon buddy someday. Oh. Finally, I graduated oh. from high school and moved into a dorm in college that didn't allow pets. Of course. Which was torture oh, for me. I waited all this Finding time to move then. out, and I'm still not able to bring a horde of mice, rats, birds, sugar gliders, like and maybe a raccoon store. into the rooms. But YouTube started kicking off shortly after, and I moved back in with my parents to pursue that. Flash forward a bit, and I was finally able to get Ari. After 10 years of wanting a bird, I'd <laughs> finally done it. And what a gander he is. Was he worth the wait? Little chunky boy. No, he's chunky a dumb bird. Boy. Oh. 
you're good. You're a good bird. I'm not currently looking to get any more animals right now, even though I really want them. I have Ari, and he's already in the of a handful, so I can't commit to anything else right now. I am gonna get a dog eventually. That's a promise. And I do really like reptiles, so I've done my fair share of research on skinks. But that's only a 30% chance to actually happen. I haven't really grown out of my animal phase. Oh my I've just become a mix of that and my parents. Still hopelessly entranced by no! creatures. Yeah! But no! also being the one who has to tell myself no because I have other stupid responsibilities. Hopefully when I have kids, they won't be as animal obsessed as I am. Oh, because I don't think I have the strength my parents had to be able to say no to any animals so they ask say, for. So there she's gonna Thank say God yes my to parents every were responsible and Yeah! <laughs> now you're getting a Komodo dragon! Sora, can we get a parrot? No. How about a dog? When you move out. How about a ki- what? what about a yellow maid Amazon? When you move can out. Can we get a T-Rex? When you move can out. Can we get a subscribe button? Yeah. Alright, subscribe! <laughs>